Okay, so we are going to talk about momentum. And momentum is mass in and here you see a train that has gone through uh, the wall of a train station. This happened in Paris and the train was behind schedule so it picked up speed and then when it came time to stop it had so much momentum the brakes were unable to stop it in time and it went straight through the train station. This is a good example of momentum. It could have made Bill Nye's great moments in momentum clip. Well, momentum is related to what we call an impulse. And so we want to look at what an impulse is. We want to understand that an impulse changes momentum. And that's probably as far as we will get today. So what is momentum? Momentum is mass in motion. Okay, Mass in motion. This almost tells us what the formula for momentum is. Okay, Momentum is mass times velocity. And if you remember, velocity is speed and direction. So velocity not only includes the rate that you travel or the speed but it also includes direction which means that momentum is a vector vector quantities have both a magnitude which is an amount and a direction so velocity is a vector therefore momentum is a vector and the direction of momentum will be the same as the direction of the velocity Okay, so here we are going to solve a problem now. We're going to use this equation, momentum is m times v. A 20 kilogram object moving at 10 meters per second has a momentum. So here, 20 kilograms, that is our mass. 10 meters per second is our velocity. Now, we did not say the direction. We can just say it's traveling to the right. So our momentum would be 20 times 10, 200, and then kilograms times meter per second. This is the units for momentum, kilogram meters per second. And it would be traveling to the right. Okay. Um, one, something very, very massive, if your mass is huge, then you're going to have a lot of momentum. If something is moving very, very fast, but it may not have a lot of mass, that can also um, carry momentum. Okay, so momentum is both mass and velocity. So you can have a light object moving very, very fast with a lot of momentum, and you can, or you could have a very massive object moving very, very slowly with a lot of momentum. Okay, now we said we were going to talk about impulse. And what is impulse? Okay, in physics, impulse means a change in your momentum okay a change in your momentum well if you think about it what changes your momentum well this has to be either a change in mass or a change in the velocity and if you have a change in velocity then that means there's acceleration going on okay and if there's acceleration going on then that means a force has to be applied. Okay, So for acceleration to occur, a force has to be applied. And if the given force is applied over a longer period of time, then you have more acceleration. So impulse is, is a measure of how much force is applied over time. And it will equal your change in momentum. So the formula for impulse is equal to F times T, force times time, okay? A force applied over the time will change the momentum of an object, okay? Now, just think about this a second, and what are the consequences of this? So if we have something with a whole lot of momentum, 
do we necessarily need a large force to stop it? Think about that. Okay, so here's some impulse examples. In the first, we have a baseball player, and he has follow-through. And the follow-through is because he's going to apply that force over a period of time, okay, extend the time of the collision, and that way he can change the momentum of that ball. He can make it go faster once it leaves the bat. Okay. In the middle example, right here, we have a boxer, okay? And this is what we mean by uh, sometimes when they say riding the punch. If you have somebody punching you and your face is real stiff and tense and you don't move it, then the collision is going to be very short. The time that you apply that force is very short and that's very small. The time is very small. So the force will be large and have a big impact on your face. Okay. Now, if you apply the same force with the punch, but you kind of ride the punch, that means you kind of go back with the punch, then the time is larger that you are extending that, um, that you are taking to stop that force. And so the force on your face is going to be small, okay? In football, okay, the defensive player applies a force for a given amount of time to stop the momentum of the offensive player with the ball, okay? The shorter that time is, then the greater the force they're going to be applying on each other. And then this is using a karate chop to break a bunch of um, wood. We'll talk about that in a second. Remember, impulse can change the momentum. So impulse, which is your force times time, equals the change in momentum. Okay, this triangle means change. Here's the formula for momentum. Remember, impulse is force times time. Impulse can be exerted on an object to either increase or decrease the momentum. So in the case of the bat and the follow through of the, on the ball, that increases the momentum of the ball. In the case of the um, punch in, in the boxers, you have a punch in a boxer's face. When he rides the punch, he's, he is uh, going to decrease the momentum. Or a car hitting a wall is decreasing the momentum. Okay, now case one, we're going to increase the momentum, hitting a golf ball, okay? So the rightward moving club head, which is more massive than the golf ball, okay, experiences a leftward force, and the golf ball experiences a rightward force. The forces have equal magnitude in opposite direction. Well, why doesn't that club travel as far as the golf ball? Can anybody answer that? Um... If you apply the greatest force for the longest period of time, and again, that's the follow-through, then you can accelerate that golf ball from zero on the tee to a very high speed in a relatively short amount of time because of that impulse. That force you're applying with the club head, you extend that for just a little bit more time, it's going to apply more, give the ball more momentum. It will increase its speed. Um, same thing with the baseball and the bat. We, we talked about that. Okay. Now, if the ball is being thrown at the bat, the impulse of the bat decelerates the ball. And then with that follow you through, you're accelerating even faster in the opposite direction. Okay. Well, what about decreasing momentum? Now, you want to pay close attention to this because you're going to do a project um, where you want to decrease, uh, you, you will be decreasing the momentum of a falling egg. And you want to do that in such a way that it does not apply too much force to the egg. Okay, so it takes an impulse to change the momentum. So if you want to stop something like that train or an egg falling to the ground, then you want to apply an impulse. And the impulse is force times time. Well, the longer, the more time it takes to apply 
a force to change the momentum, the smaller your force can be. Okay. You can apply a lot of force over a very short time, or you can apply a little bit of force over a much longer time. And the advantage to applying a little bit of force over a longer time is then you can keep things from breaking, okay? Because maybe the force that you have to apply to stop it might be too great for the egg or the car or the body. And it would break. But if you apply a smaller force over a longer time, you can still change the momentum. You can still change the velocity to zero. And so these are giving you some examples here, showing you. See, in trampoline, the collision is going to, uh, that trampoline absorbs, or it takes a longer time to change the momentum because it has give to it. This haystack stack has give to it, right? It can slow it down slower. Um, it takes more time to slow it down. Whereas if you hit a wall, that's kind of immediate. That wall doesn't have much give. So here's example of decreasing the momentum. If the boxer moves away from the punch, that means riding the punch. Okay, then he's going to have more time in his collision, so, so the force will be smaller. Um, if he moves into the punch, then that's going to have or tightens his muscles and kind of resists that punch, then the collision time will be shorter, but then the force will be much greater that's going to be applied to his face. Um, an airbag is designed to extend the time over which a force is applied, okay? Um, and so that decreases the force. Now here with a hand, you want to maximize the force to break all the, this stack of um, bricks. Well, to maximize the force, you apply a force over a very short period of time, okay? And um, that will help break the bricks.